Okay, so this video is going to show you how to quickly get some mid-side processing happening in live with uh, the use of a few simple devices. Um, <clears throat> I'd encourage you to read through the article that is a uh, companion to this video that gives some history and common uses of mid-side processing. And this is just a brief overview of some ways to get into it, some easy ways to uh, accomplish it in live. And <clears throat> the first way we're going to do it is just simple mid-side EQing, which is probably the most common use of it. And I'm sure that a lot of live users that use um, live on a daily basis aren't even aware that the EQ has a built-in mid-side mode. Go down here and it has three modes. We're going to be focusing on the mid-side today. So what you have here, you can edit the side signal, which is everything that's different in the stereo field, and then the mid signal, which is everything that is in common. A common use for this is to cut all the low end out of the sides. Well, not all of it, but uh, amount, because you don't really want um, low frequencies out on the sides. You'll get phasing issues and, and some muddiness. So this is a common use of this technique. And let's just uh, A, B this really quick with uh, a track I've been working on. So if you notice when I cut the mid signal all the way down, it actually totally removed the bass and kick drum, which is, you know, exactly what we want in the middle. So that just shows you this is working properly. And, um, you know, there's more advanced things you can do with uh, mid-side processing, but that requires isolating the mid and the side in their own chains, which I have done over here with a few EQ8s. On the mid, you have <clears throat> one EQ8 set to mid-side mode, and with the side completely cut, so the only the mid will be coming through. Let's hear just that. You can hear that kick and bass are really present in that, um, in that chain. And here we have the side only. As you see, I have all the mid cut out. And um, what I've done to both of these, it's pretty much the same thing I did with just the one EQ8, but this allows us some more advanced manipulations such as I've got a saturator and a delay, some really obvious things just to show you what kind of things can be done. So let's just mess around with these. So those are some, some of the things you can do once you have them isolated. You can add a little dirt, add a little more space to the sides, you know, whatever you want to do. But be uh, use these techniques with discretion. They can really mess up a mix, and they're not meant to be, you know, um, a, um, a magic fix for a bad mixing or, um, you know, gonna, you're going to fix some serious problems. They're just meant to help you tighten up and kind of just <clears throat> tweak things down to where you want them. There's one more way that you can easily isolate the mid and the sides using the utility device, which I've done over here. So for your side channel, just set the width to 
mids, set the width to zero, and Yeah, I know that phaser sounds goofy, but I just wanted to, uh, again, demonstrate the way that you can isolate these sides, process them, and still have your kick, bass, and your low end completely unaffected by the processes, keeping those tight, punchy, and with a lot of presence. Um, so I hope that this will give you some idea how to get into mid-side processing. It's a powerful technique, really easy to do in live. Thanks for watching.